You could actually see some companies, this is an electronic speed control for a radio control boat that I have. It has this capacitor bank and I didn't add this capacitor bank in there. It actually comes like this. Hello, my name is Ryan and in today's video, we're gonna be taking a look at how to extend the wires on an electronic speed control correctly. Now in the previous video, we looked at why it's harmful and we related that to the water hammer effect within your own home. Now I hope no one has gone out in their own home, turn on the faucet in order to try and damage your, your pipes. Um, if you want to look at how that's done, I'm sure there's plenty of examples on YouTube that you can search for. However, in this video, I have an electronic speed control, and what we were relating in that previous video is those battery wire inputs to the electronic speed control. We are talking about how that water hammer effect can happen within this side of the speed control. You can get a surge of pressure that happens and of course in electrical terms that pressure is actually relating to the voltage that what we're looking at is the capacitors on the electronic speed control those can become taxed pretty hard if this is something that's occurring where you have actually extended the battery wires no it's not going to fail on day one but it could fail you know on day 10 or day 20 or whatever it is and that's what we're looking to avoid so the first thing that we need to understand is what do we need to do in order to make this safe well what we need to do is we need to add in a component. That component is known as a capacitor. We are looking for a capacitor that is of a low ESR and also low impedance. What this means is we really are just looking for a good quality cylindrical capacitor. All the capacitors on these speed controls are um, actually cylindrical and you can see that by picking up one of your own. Um, another thing to point out is that we are looking for a capacitor that has the correct amount of voltage. So the voltage rating on the capacitor needs to give yourself headroom to the maximum that your LiPo can be charged to. So, you know, 4.2 volts times however many cells that your speed control is rated for. If it's a 6S, you're gonna be looking at 25 point something. In this case, you'll probably wanna move to the 35 volt capacitor. So a 35 volt capacitor is going to give you 10, approximately 10 volts that you'd be able to use. Uh, that should be fairly safe. The next thing to look at is the capacity of the capacitor itself. So what we're looking for is we're looking for um, one that is rated at 460 microfarads. Now, of course, this microfarad, that's one times 10 to the negative six farads. Farads is the unit that represents capacitors, capacitance within a capacitor, and that's what we need to, we need to do, 460 microfarad. And we wanna add 460 for every four inches of wire that we add to our battery input wire. So if we take this and we're adding two inch to the negative side, and we're also adding two inch to the positive side, that would be the total of four, meaning we need to add a 460 microfarad more capacitance to the side of the speed control. So the next thing that we need to know is exactly how do you do that? What, you know, this capacitor that's a cylindrical capacitor, how do we actually get that on the wires itself? Well, what we can do is we can pick up a board. You can actually buy these pre-made. It's a board. Uh, you'll probably see it right here. It's a board that we have that has a bunch of capacitors on it. You could have, you know, two, three, um, that you don't typically add just one capacitor. It's not worth the time to go and just add the one. So you'd get maybe two or three on this board. Those capacitors must be wired in parallel. Parallel wiring of those capacitors adds the amount of capacitance that they do have. So then you have those capacitors that lead to these terminal ports on the board. These terminal ports are used to actually tap into your speed control wires. And you do that by cutting a little bit of the insulation around the wire and you drop that on the terminal and you solder it. Um, again, it's just like what's pictured here. So that's what you do in order to actually add it. Now the location is important. You don't wanna add that capacitor bank to the very end of your battery leads. Doing this um, adds no value. Your battery acts as a massive capacitor. You also don't wanna add them um, in multiple different locations along the wire. That's also gonna be leading to something that's not as efficient. What you really wanna do is about an inch to an inch and a half maximum from the input side, you wanna solder that capacitor bank right there. That is the best spot to place that. Um, now you could actually see some companies, this is an electronic speed control for a radio control boat that I have. It has this capacitor bank and I didn't add this capacitor bank in there. It actually comes like this and you can see it's about, you know, about that inch to an inch and a half uh, distance away from the input side. And you can also see the capacitors on the top here. Those are what is built into the electronic speed control right on the board itself. And this is an additional bank. And I didn't take the heat shrink off that. I, I'm, I'm sure you know exactly what by now what these things look like. That's how they do it for the radio control boat. 
world. Uh, Boats are really harsh on the electronic speed control, so you have that extra protection in there just for that case. So now we know how we can protect the input side if you happen to have to lengthen that battery input side of your speed control. The next thing to look at is the other side of the speed control when we're talking about the wires that go to your brushless motor. If you want to extend the wires to this brushless motor um, right here, you can add as much as you want. Now, personally, I've added upwards of 12 inches and I didn't see any problem. However, adding a bunch of wire to this side of the speed control, your motor side of the speed control can cause interference. And if you do experience this, there is a solution. What you can do is you could take your wires and you can actually twist them up so that you have this twisting action happening and you'll want to get roughly three twists per inch. That will be more than enough to counteract any of the electronic um, noise that you can introduce or interference that you're introducing into your system. And that pretty much sums up how to protect the, the output side and the input side to your brushless speed control. Now I hope you enjoyed this video and are able to use what you've learned on your own applications. Um, if you do like this video and you want to see more, don't forget to hit that subscribe button so that you can be notified as soon as a video is available to watch. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.